Hey guys, what's up? It's Dragoon here, and with the Boruto manga finally coming out earlier this month, it only makes sense that the anime would follow suit. Currently, there are two episodes available on Crunchyroll for free subscribers, and I finally got around to taking a look at them. After my review of the first volume of the manga here on the channel, I was pretty excited to see how the anime would take the story and make it its own. So if you happen to watch my review of the manga, I mentioned that a lot of that story was a retread of of the Boruto movie, and I was curious what the anime was going to do about that, because it wouldn't make sense to show the same content for a third time. And boy, the anime definitely took it in a bit of an unexpected turn, because it actually takes place before all of that, before Boruto has even been enrolled into the Ninja Academy. And because of that, we get a lot of different situations for this anime to set up. As always, we have our main protagonist, Boruto, who is just as bratty and just as angsty as he was in the manga. Perhaps a little less because the anime, at least in these first two episodes, paints him slightly more heroic than they do in the manga. He stands up for his classmates while still trying to prove himself as a separate entity from that of his father. You see, a large theme of these first couple episodes of the Boruto anime is the sense that other academy students consider Boruto to be riding on the coattails of his father. And trust me, You'll see that translation a lot if you happen to watch it on Crunchyroll. I don't know if it's different in other places, but if it's the same one, you'll see that phrase a lot. And just like you would assume, Boruto doesn't like having any of that. He's even late to show up for the entrance ceremony at the academy, and how does he arrive? He crashes a train into the stone monument right into Naruto's head. And other than Boruto enrolling into the academy and making sure that this story is his own, there's not a whole lot to talk about in terms of the plot. I mean, it's only two episodes, so far. What we can talk about, however, are some of the characters, and interestingly enough, the anime includes new characters that weren't present whatsoever in that first volume of the manga. Firstly, we have Denki, who got more screen time in these first two episodes than virtually any of the next generation from the original Naruto series. With the manga having Sarada and Mitsuki on the cover, I kind of expected them to make a bigger appearance in these first two episodes, but Mitsuki is entirely absent and Sarada's barely there at all. I actually found it to be kind of funny because when Boruto finally comes into the academy, Chocho asks Sarada if she knows him already and she says, No. Our parents are friends, that's it. I don't want anything more to do with this guy. So it certainly seems like she inherited that trait from her mother and her father. But back to Denki, whose name essentially means electricity in Japanese, his parents are essentially the owners of a large manufacturing company in the Leaf Village, and they actually run a lot of the trains that go throughout the city. But Denki is kind of your nerdy, weakling type of character, whom is actually saved by Boruto, and he has some type of conflict that gets presented in the first or second episode with his parents, but it's not really delved too deep, and then this like dark chakra envelops him and makes him into a different person for a very brief moment. I'm not entirely sure what that was about or if they're going to expand upon it or not, but it was certainly kind of interesting to see. And then the other large new character we have is Iwabe, who is pretty much kind of a rival character for Boruto. He's been held back from graduating the academy twice now, and it's pretty much because he just sucks at studying. He's apparently incredible at taijutsu and ninjutsu, but he just can't seem to quite pass all of his classes to make it through. And for some reason, he just decides to resent them for that. He says something along the lines of, Oh, if this were 10 years ago, they'd let me go because it doesn't matter. They need ninja for the war and for the missions and stuff. And then Boruto kind of says something along the lines of, Come on, like, that's kind of a lame excuse. Just because the times have changed, you can't graduate? Like, get better, bro. And because of these two rivaling personalities, these two clash in an actual battle in episode two. And I won't spoil who ends up winning that battle if you haven't seen it yet already, but it's certainly interesting to watch at least, getting a little bit more action than what we got in episode one. Another key difference that I found to be between the anime and the manga is that Boruto already has the Byakugan at episode one. He doesn't know it and it activates on his own only twice, but he has it already. And that was something when I read the manga that I assumed either he unlocked later in his life or there was some other story behind it because of the scar on his eye, maybe it was transplanted into him like Kakashi's Sharingan was. It's 
kind of tough to say, but it'll be interesting to see where the anime takes that specific feature in the future. Is that even the Byakugan? It looks just like it, and it did briefly allow him to see that dark chakra I mentioned previously, but why does he have no idea what it is? It comes as a shock to Boruto, and then it disappears again. I feel like if it was the Byakugan, he would know. I mean, the Hyuga clan is pretty particular about their Keke Genkai. I figured Hinata's father would be all over that. Spending lots of time with those two children, teaching them about the Byakugan, teaching them about the Gentle Fist, and probably talking about Neji too. And I know at some point, Himawadi will awaken the Byakugan, so it just seems really weird. Like, that was the only thing that really stood out to me in terms of the story. Other than that, there's not a whole lot we can really talk about from a story perspective. I really did enjoy the fact that the anime opened up with the cold opening, just like the manga did, set in the future, and it looked even better, sounded even better. It was way more intense and way more interesting in the anime than it was in the manga, I think. The bit of exposition and the bit of storytelling we get at the beginning in these first two episodes is pretty standard. It sort of introduces the main characters, introduces some of the side characters, and just tries to get the ball rolling a little bit. It's nothing too extraordinary, but yet it's nothing too terrible either. As for the presentation, it's... Okay. The art and animation are clean and colorful, but they certainly are not without their faults. They're very much akin to the original Naruto anime, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but for the opening of this series, I feel like it could have been a bit better. The music is perfectly fine, nothing seems to stick out, nothing was too memorable from these first two episodes, but there was nothing really distracting either. I actually quite like the opening. Kanabun does a good job, and the opening they did for Naruto Shippuden was easily one of my favorites. The ending theme isn't bad, but it's not great either, in my opinion. So unfortunately, with such a small amount of source material to cover, there really isn't a whole lot to talk about here. If you guys have seen the first two episodes of the Boruto anime, please feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know what you thought. Was it worth your time? Do you feel like it could have been better? Do you feel like it could have been worse? I think that one's always a given. And what do you think in comparison to the manga? I think it definitely serves as a decent prequel to the manga or to the movie, but I'm really, really interested to see how and when those two stories are going to intersect. It could certainly continue to improve from here, or it could get bad, so only time will tell on this one. And with that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.